Let's speak now to Daniel Snell. He's founder of Arrival Education, a London-wide scheme that helps young people become successful adults. And Gilbert Sabakaki, who's taken part in that Arrival Education scheme, joins us too. Thank you very much to both of you for joining us in the studio. Mm -hmm. Now, given the work that you do with young people, what's your reaction to what's happening across London and the UK? Well, I, firstly, I, I, I don't think this is... Um, I think this has got out of control. I don't think people are thinking. I think they're doing it for reasons they don't even fully understand. I think they're swept along in a crowd frenzy. It certainly isn't political. It's looting, it's theft, it's mindless behavior. And I think a lot of these young men and women are going to regret this when the dust settles. And what I would say is, Tonight, I think the police are going to get heavy-handed. Uh, they're going to be firm in a way that they haven't seen so far. And, and all I would say is I beg those young people that I work with and I beg the other young men and women in these cities, please, please get off the streets tonight, please. And if your mothers are listening to this, don't let your children on the streets tonight because it's going to get, it's going to get serious now. So please come off the streets. How, how do you reach out to the young people that you work with? What, what do you think is, is a successful way of getting through to some of these disenfranchised youth? Well, there are, I mean, that's a, it's a complex question and there, we haven't got time to go through all the answers, but I would say that there is a real... The number one issue in these communities is confidence and belief. There's none. There, uh, there are very little opportunities, but even if there were opportunities, they wouldn't know how to deal with them anyways. There is all sorts of limitations for them entering successfully into society and because we don't have the pathways from those communities into our main frame of employment and society they don't know how to act it's easy for them to tear this down because they have nothing and when you have nothing you can't lose anything and for them it's just simply about it's gang on gang now which 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 houses did you rob uh, which streets, which shops did you, what did you take, what am I going to take? And so we've got this inter-gang thing going on across London and cities joining in where people are talking about what they've stolen, you know, how many TVs you've stolen. It's absolutely insane. Yeah, but tell us about your experience with, with uh, this group. You're 17 years old, you're from Hackney, and how has this particular youth group helped you change your life? Like, it's really helped me change my life because, like I said before, it's helped change my mindset. So, rather than go out and get involved in all the nonsense and all the writing that's happening now, like, it's helped me to get the ability to sit back and realise that this is my own community that I'm destroying. These are my shops, these are my businesses, these are my job opportunities I'm taking away from myself. And I really think being in the programme has helped me develop this mindset and it's helped me grow and to get to the level of maturity where I understand that getting involved in all of this is just negative on myself and I'm affecting myself negatively as now, well. Clearly you're a smart cookie. Do you think this could work for everybody if every young person was given the opportunity to get into programmes like this if they wish to? Yeah, definitely, definitely. The more the better. Like The more people that you try to reach to, the more that you'll get. Different people will obviously will take different times to get the mindset, but eventually if this is spread to as many people as possible, they will change so what do, you make it, make, what do you make of what's going on? I mean, you've seen the pictures. I just really think that it's saddening, really. And I really feel for the people whose businesses are destroyed, whose livelihoods, whose houses are being burnt, because they say that they're targeting the police, but really and truly they're just targeting their own community. They're targeting each other rather than doing anything productive. I mean, what people are saying is that, you know, the, the, the kind of the social excuses and all the rest of it have gone by the by now, and this is just about petty theft. Yeah, and I totally agree with that. There is, there is no excuses. There is no saying that it's the police fault because if it really was the police fault, then why are you only burning down shops? Why are you burning down people's homes? Why are you burning down people's cars? So if you were to use the argument that you are targeting the police, then why are you targeting each other, people in your own community? So what do you think needs to happen from here? What, what will work? What will stop this violence? Is it more heavy-handed police tactics or what? Heavy-handed police tactics, in my opinion, might, try, might make things worse for a little bit, but if the community spirit is really built back up and people understand that this is their own, this is their own community that they're destroying, then they might come to get a grip and stop 
doing what they're doing. So do you think it's a, a, I mean, the power of the community can be very strong, can't it? We've seen people pitching up to clear up their own communities, people trying to defend their own communities. Do you think it's a case of the community coming together? Yeah. I th yeah. You try something and you, so I, I think the community need to grab this. And I think the mothers need to own the streets. The mothers need to come on the streets and say no more. Uh, we've organised something on Friday at um, Central Hall that positive voices can come to and talk about, how, first of all, how to stop this, and then secondly, uh, what to do forward. And I encourage youth workers, people involved in these communities, positive uh, role models, mothers, to come down on Friday and start to talk about how to engage with this in a positive way. Um, but I think in the first instance, we've just got to stop this and let things cool down a bit and then think what next. Just a final word from you, Gil, but what would be your message to young people who are contemplating getting involved in this violence again tonight? My message is the police are actually going to step up tonight, so it's for your own safety and your own benefit if you keep out of it tonight. So really just and put a stop to it. Okay, Daniel okay. Snell, Gilbert Sabakaki, thank you very much thank for joining us on BBC News. Thank you, thank you, Chris.